Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to SciShow Quiz Show, the show where science is magic. Today we're here with internet guy Hank Green. Hello, Michael! Today you will be competing on behalf of Jen Merriam. I will do you right. And SciShow writer Dave Los. You are competing on behalf of Daniel Wyman. I'm sorry about what's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> What are these two competing for today, Stefan Chin? Well, Michael, two of our esteemed Subbable subscribers will have a chance to win some DFTBA swag, such as this Pizza John Frisbee. Or some Pizza John socks. Or even this No Edge poster signed by Hank Green. Back to you, Michael. All right, boys, are you ready? As Let's ready as I'll ever be. Oh yeah. <coughs> Party time. You've each got a thousand points in the bank. If you get this question correctly, you'll win however much I decide. Okay. <laughs> Sounds fair. The to topic me. is the moon. Which element occurs in the highest concentration in lunar soil? I didn't even give you the choices yet. Oh. oh. <laughs> then you're gonna make them answer then. Because it's is it, I'll wait for is the, it I'll oxygen? Wait for give me A through D. Oh, you want me to... <laughs> I, I don't know how the game works. I, they don't let me read the script beforehand. Um, your choice is... You didn't want to wait. No, you didn't want to wait. He should have to... Uh, yeah, no, I have, have to. to I hit the, I hit the, I'll wait for them. I'm going to say I'll oxygen. The answer is oxygen. <laughs> it's going to be a long, I've, long day. I've Congratulations. Been, yeah, I feel, you yeah. won 100 points. Oh, that's all? Yeah. That's what? It's Why? the first question. There's only three questions. 105 points. Oh my god. Much like the Earth's crust, the most common substance in the lunar soil is silica, also known as silicon dioxide, or SiO2. So by element, oxygen is the most common by far, which accounts for about 45% of lunar soil. Silicon is second, at about 20%. Round two, name that animal. In this round, you will each have to name an animal based on its sound. It is indeed multiple choice. Uh, I may or may not tell you what kind of animal it is before you hear the sound. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. What animal is this? <laughs> okay, Dave buzzed in before the multiple choice. Okay, what do you this think time? it is? Well, you did it last time, so I can... Yeah. I would say it's some sort of monkey, like a gibbon or something. Incorrect! Oh! Would okay. you like to hear the choices? I'm gonna hear the choices even though I'm... I, I know, I think, what kind of animal it is, but... I don't know what species. Okay. I may have been way off on that monkey guess. Huh? You may have been. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that A, hyena, B, zebra, D, sea lion? Oh, a hyena, for sure. Incorrect! What? Mm. what? 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 Is it a sea lion? The answer is zebra. What? What? So neither of us got it. No, yeah, we are losers. Sorry for whoever I'm playing for. Zero points for both of you. Wow. A zebra? There are three species of zebra, all members of the genus Equus, which includes all horses, donkeys, and zebras. Some zebras are closely related to the wild ass, or donkey, and if you listen, you can hear the similarity in the zebra's call. Yeah. Okay, right the monkey <laughs> you ready for the second sound? Okay. Uh, what bird... Oh, more sounds. ...makes this sound? I'm gonna wait for the multiple choice Yeah, me one. too. Okay, is that A, a sage grouse, D, a great horned owl. Did you just go A to D? Yes, he did. Or X, an ostrich. <laughs> he got there first. Sage grouse. That's Incorrect! My... Oh. That's what I was gonna say, so I'm glad you got there first. <laughs> We're on a roll, Hank. Oh, wow. So I have to choose now. Yep. Okay. What was D? <laughs> I don't remember. The second one? <laughs> it was an owl. It was a great horned owl. <laughs> owl. There, yeah. there were only three choices, I thought. Yeah, no, there were. Yeah. Yeah. But he said D. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say ostrich, because that's weirder. Correct! It's yeah. also the last option available. I'm gonna give you 200 points for that one. Nice oh work. wow! Woo! I have 1,303. Five. Five points. <laughs> <laughs> ostriches make lots of different sounds, but the one you just heard was known as a boom, which ostriches can make using an inflatable pouch in their throats. Ostriches are thought to boom either to attract mates or to warn other nearby ostriches of danger. And finally, what animal makes this sound? Animals make weird sounds. Is that a red fox, a peahen, or a skunk? I'm gonna let you guess first. Yeah, that's probably the right call. Yeah. I'm gonna guess a red fox. 
Correct. Oh! Woo! Oh. <laughs> For that correct answer, I shall award you 300 points. What? Mm. That's a lot. Yeah. We're I'm getting... only down by 605. <laughs> we're getting to the big numbers now. <laughs> That is one of the many things that the fox says. It's an unusual sound called geckering that foxes make when they fight, and you can learn all about what the fox really says right here. And now it's time for round three, double or nothing. You can each decide how many of your points to wager. You could lose that many, you could win that many. The topic of the next question is geologic time. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. While they're deciding how many points to wager, we will go to commercial break. Be right back, unless there's no commercial break, because that happened last time. And welcome back. Um, okay, you guys ready for the question? Because I'm ready to give it to you. Yes, sir. sir. Okay. Geologic time is organized into several types of periods that go from big to small. The biggest, longest periods are called eons. We're currently in the Phanerozoic Eon, which goes back 541 million years. Then there are eras. The Cenozoic Era that we're in now began 66 million years ago. Next come periods. This is the Quaternary Period, which goes back about 2.6 million years. Finally, there are epochs, the smallest unit. What epoch? Are we currently in? Are you kidding? Yeah. Are we in? We got, oh, we got multiple, it's multiple choice. choice. Okay. The Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene, or Holocene. Good luck spelling those. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first one again? Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene, Holocene. I do not know. <laughs> I just hope I spelled it right. <laughs> okay. I probably did. Are you ready to reveal your answers? Yes. It did looks he, like did either uh, of us spell it right. Um, I think you spelled it right. You did not spell that correctly. Oh no. Oh uh, no. You did not spell that correctly either. <laughs> However, <laughs> you just won 800 points. What? High fives. Oh my god. No. High fives. <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> I think I just won for you. Holocene comes from the Greek words holos kainos, or entirely new, and it's measured back to 11,700 years ago at the end of the last glacial period. Recently, there's been a movement among some geologists to acknowledge the beginning of a new epoch, which they call the Anthropocene, to mark the first permanent impacts that humans are having on the world's ecosystems. But it hasn't been officially acknowledged by the organization that gets the final say on these things, which is a group called the Stratigraphy Commission of the Geological Society of London. Whoa! Oh my God. Coming back from behind. Oh, You're welcome, close. Daniel. That was. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this was the luckiest moment of my entire life, right here. Well, one in four. Yeah. Maybe not my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Daniel Wyman. Keep an eye on your mailbox for something special from DFTBA. Thanks for joining us for this SciShow quiz show. If you'd like one of our resident smarties to compete for you, you can go to subbable.com slash scishow. If you have any questions, comments, we're on Facebook and Twitter and down in the comments below. And of course, if you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe. Mm -hmm.